I released a lot of videos in 2022, but in this particular one, I've compiled the best of those. The videos that had the biggest impact on golfers' games, helped them shoot lower scores and drop their handicaps. Enjoy. Well, we're really gonna be looking at how we change the delivery of the club and the club facing impact. It's gonna help you straighten out your drives. I want you to look at your golf ball. I want you to imagine there is a clock around that golf ball. So when we look down towards the target, this would be 12 o'clock. So when we've got curve on the golf ball that we don't want, it's effectively because we have a club path which is not straight and we have a club face which is disagreeing with that. How do we change it? Well, let's say we're a right to left player, someone who draws the ball too much or hooks the ball. Your golf club will be traveling in from around about, let's say seven o'clock on that clock face through to around about one o'clock on that clock face. It's traveling from in to out. We need the opposite feel. Now, impact is key. You know, we know that impact is the most important position in golf. This is where most golfers go wrong, however. If I'm trying to change my impact and change my club path, I have to start thinking about that here, right at the top. As soon as I get to the top of my golf swing, what I do in the early stages of my downswing are key, vital to change that club path. So many golfers will get to the top, they'll start down as normal, and when they get to about here, they're thinking about changing their club path. It's too late, absolutely too late. By the time you get down to this point here, club path is already dictated, it's already decided, you're not gonna change it. So, if I'm a hooker of the golf ball, I need to feel that my club travels from a five o'clock position to an 11 o'clock position, they're out to win. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my setup, I'm gonna visualize that clock face, I'm gonna visualize that five and that 11, I'm gonna make a swing to the top, and I'm gonna to think to myself, what would I have to do to get the hand and the club out to that five o'clock position? I would have to make a movement such as this. You can see as I'm doing that, it's moving my hands and club out. Now when I swing across, it's the opposite, it's working more out to win. Now the chances are when you come to hit a golf ball, it's not gonna be that extreme. It's gonna be pretty neutral, but that's what you have to feel. So that's how you fix that hook. What about a slicer? Well, a slicer already has that club path, that out to win. They're gonna change that. So you've got seven o'clock to one o'clock, and that's the opposite feeling. But again, if we leave it too late, we've got very little chance. So as I get to the top from here, I've already got to be thinking about how do I get my club to a position where it can swing in from seven through to one. So we have to think about the early part of your downswing. What you do in that first millisecond is so important. Using that visual on the ground is really gonna help. For me, I hook the ball, always have done. So I'm gonna hit this shot and I'm gonna try and work as hard as I can to get the golf club and the hands out to five o'clock. And that should help me hit it a little straighter. This next exercise is brilliant to do on the golf course. Potentially to the side of the tee as your player partners are hitting their shots, you can do this. It's brilliant for some pre-tee shot feels. I've got my tee or where my ball would be. And then, you know, around about six to eight inches in front of that, I've got my golf bag. I'm gonna take my dress, I'm gonna hover the club a few inches above the ground, and I'm gonna make some back swings and some downswing movements where I try and get the toe of my club to strike the side of my bag. And you can see that there. What it's doing is, again, it's teaching me or getting me to learn how to take that club face, which on the downswing is pointing way over towards where you're viewing this from and learning how to rotate it and actually get it a little bit closed at this point. Those of you who struggle, you will very often have, as you start down, lots of upper body movement, too aggressive, too much tension in the hands and the arms, and you're going to find that the heel of the golf club or the club shaft tends to hit the bag and you can see how the club face on this occasion will be pointing way out to the right. That's gonna give me a pretty poor result. So as I stand here, I'm just gonna make some little movements and just get the toe of the club just to feel like it makes contact with my bag. Now, as I said, if I'm just the side of the tee box doing this, great. When it's my turn to hit, I peg my ball up. I've just given myself some really great feels what I need to do to square that club face. I'd almost guarantee that if you do that before your tee shot, it's not gonna to go to the right. You're gonna get a much, much better result. Now this fourth point, potentially the most important one so far. Really key that you get this one right. 
So stage number four is trying to put it all together when there's a golf ball there. Now you can see that I've got one of my alignment sticks in the ground. This alignment stick is so important that we have this in place. You'll notice that I've got it, you know, around about, what is that, four feet back from the golf ball in a pretty shallow angle pointing over the golf ball. Now, if I take an address and just do a normal takeaway and return the club to the ball, you can see that I would not be hitting the alignment stick. So we know that's in the right place. Why is it there? Well, watch what happens if I put myself into this downsing position. From here, golfers realize that they need to square the face. They realize that the club face does not point towards the target and it's something that obviously we need to do. But one of the ways that we often see golfers try to square the face is with the forearm. If I use the forearm and rotate it, I will square the face. But you can see where the club has gone. Now the club kind of points where I want it to point, but the golf club's coming in from pretty much the, the incorrect angle, as you can see there. It might help me control the face, but I'm gonna get some pretty poor results. So it's pretty common to see a golfer who struggles with an open face, fixing it by trying to make this movement here. Yes, you'll have some success with the face. Your club pass is gonna be way left. You're gonna get some pretty terrible results. So the alignment stick is there to make sure that we're not doing that. We're not falling into that trap. We're doing it the correct way. So the exercise here, which is number four, would be can we set up to our target, which in this case is the green in the distance. Can I make some little golf swings, missing the alignment stick, and make the ball head off left of that flag? If I can do that, it's gonna give me everything I need to know about the little swing I made. I'm gonna go pretty slow speed, but the goal here is to miss the alignment stick and make the ball go left. Perfect, path was good, face was closed. I used all of those first three exercises, had the feels, used that, delivered it perfectly. That is how you square the face in the golf swing. There'll be many of you watching this who just struggle to get out. You know, you leave it in the bunker or you fear the bunkers. If that's you, pay attention to this first one. So I've got myself the club that I use at the bunkers. I would advise you getting something which is specifically designed for bunker play. That means it's gonna be high bounce. This one here you can see is 12 degrees, that makes it a lot easier. So especially this wedge with high bounce is gonna make this shot certainly feel more playable. So we're gonna take a relatively wide stance, you know, certainly wider than I would probably play any other short game shot. And you notice that I've got the ball forward of center, probably around about two thirds forward, closer to my lead foot. From there, I'm gonna flare both of my feet out and I'm gonna take my knees and my hips and I'm gonna put a little bit more weight on my lead side. Probably 60, 65%, something like that. But I'm doing it through my midsection as opposed to kind of leaning with my upper body. So 60, 65% of weight into my lead side. Now in terms of alignment, I really don't want you to think too much. I'm aiming pretty much straight at that flag. I've not opened my stance, I've not opened my shoulders, I've not done anything particularly strange, it's just a normal setup. And I also want you to take a normal grip with a perfectly square club face. Remember, this is level one and we are using a golf club, hopefully, with a nice amount of bounce to help the club interact with the sand. So we don't necessarily need to open the club face. So there is my setup to play this bunker shot. What I now need to do is think about actually what do I do through the swing? Well, in the back swing, I really want you to make sure that you're creating a nice 90 degree angle or an L shape with the club shaft and your lead arm. We need to engage these wrists because we need some speed down at the bottom. As I'm doing that, I'm trying to maintain my body shape. What I mean by that is I'm not trying to allow these hips to shift back. I'm trying to keep them in this forward position that we set at address, create that nice L shape. Then I really want to be focusing on hitting the sand before the ball. We know we should do that in the bunker and moving the sand from the bunker onto the green. That's my focus, that's my intent. Notice that's not a focus on the board, it's a focus on the sand. What that's gonna do is it's going to hopefully allow me to appreciate the amount of speed that I need. It's also gonna help me appreciate the type of release that I would need because I'm trying to extract the sand out onto the green. If you can do that, if you can hit before the ball and use a style of swing which would move the sand out, I guarantee you, the ball will come out as well. So let me show you what that would look like. There's that setup that we mentioned. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to create that L and splash the sand out. And that one's finished a couple of feet away. Perfect bunker shot. So level one is that. You don't need to start cranking open the face and thinking about swinging across the ball or anything particularly special. Just get yourself set up, hit the stand in the right place, have the right intent. And I think they agree that was a pretty good shot. Right, let's move on to shot number two. Let's take a look at, you know, a really common impact condition that we see with the best players versus the golfers that struggle. You might be in that category. When we look at the great players, you know, what do we see at impact? We see the kind of handle forwards, we see the arms in a really good structure. Everything looks powerful and kind of where it should be in good alignment. When we look at those that struggle and say you might have videoed your golf swing and sort of seen this, we often see the handle too much in line with the ball. Then post impact, probably where we see the issues more often, we see kind of this lead wrist has buckled, elbows have started to kind of separate and it's this kind of cramped look, which we know doesn't give us the best strike, it doesn't give us the most consistent delivery. So why is looking at the ball partly down to that? Well, as golfers, we, we can get obsessed with the ball. We think about it, we know we've got to hit it, and that's gonna to lead to us a lot of issues. So what Jack Nicholas used to say is he used to call this the finish to his golf swing. That would make sense, it's finished. But he would call the follow through this part of the golf swing here. Now you can see at this part of the golf swing here, my lead arm and the club are in a straight line. The golf club could not be any further from my shoulder. My elbows are still very close together and my arms are very extended. Jack Nicholas would say that he used to hit shots trying to get to the follow through. This was his focus point, not the golf ball. Now, if the lead arm and the club were in a good alignment here, that would probably mean that when he made contact with the ball, the lead arm was slightly in front of the golf club. So Jack Nicholas would arrive at impact with a handle lent forwards, the lead arm out in front of the golf club, and he would be working towards the follow through. This is the point in his golf swing where everything was as extended as it could be. He could not have that golf club any further away from him. Now, if you're thinking of the golf ball, that's your focus, you're trying to hit the ball. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get the golf club head as far away from you as it can be, and impact. And we know that's not right. We know that we should have some shaft lean and the hand should be forward. So if we think about other sports, I'm gonna use football, soccer, depending on where you are in the world. If that was a football and I was trying to kick that as far as I could, when I make contact with that ball, what would my leg be? Wouldn't be straight. It would be in the process of straightening. So when would my leg be straight? After I made contact with the ball. If, not sure why you were gonna do this, but if you had a punch bag here and you were trying to hit that, when would you make contact with that bag? What would your arm be? Would your arm be straight? No, your arm, when you hit that bag, would be bent in the process of trying to straighten. The same applies with golf. We do not want to have expanded all of that energy by the time we get to the ball. If we don't want to do that, we actually need to change our focus. We need to change where we think about getting that energy out to. If my focus was this follow through position that Jack Nicholas talked about, it would enable me to delay, delay. I'm thinking about the area there. And as I try and get to that area, I've actually created perfect impact conditions. So thinking about the golf ball can really hold you back. So let's go through a couple of really simple drills that can actually help you, you know, take this into your golf swing. Now I'm gonna use an alignment stick for this. You don't have to, you can use a golf club. If you use a golf club, just flip it around so you're holding the sort of club head end. And you're very simply gonna take a setup and you're gonna make some half back swings, half follow throughs, not particularly long, and you're gonna listen for the noise that the alignment stick makes. I hear that noise in this area here. Maybe, you know, a foot and a half after the ball, a foot and a half before the ball. If you're hearing that noise, big cross, that's wrong. That's not what we want. That is you extending everything to be in line with the golf ball. If I do it correctly, it's here. 
golf ball and then forward to around about this point. It's moved maybe some two to three feet. How did I move it? I just changed my focus. I changed when I was trying to get this end of the alignment stick as far away from my chest as it could be. So as I go back and I create these angles, look how close that is to my chest. Much closer than it is at this point. At that point, that is as far away from my chest as it can be. So all I did is I changed when I tried to make that happen. I tried to make that stick move away from my chest at that point. And that gives them that very, very different noise down here. There's a really interesting point there about the release. What was I trying to do? I was trying to get the end of the alignment stick, or in this case, it's the club head, to move away from me. So notice how when I do that, I get this. What I'm not trying to do in the release is flip the club past the hands. That would be very different. That would look more like this. Notice the arms are buckling. So I'm actually trying to physically take the club head and move it away from my chest and have it at its extended point this far after the golf ball. So here's a little drill I want you to do. And this is where you're gonna start. You're gonna take a setup, ball on a peg, mid iron in hand, and you're gonna hit some little shots getting to follow through, which is here. And I'm talking really, really short swings. Ball has not carried more than about 20 yards, but look at where I am. This is my follow through. Get here, I, trust me, this is gonna be the best thing for your golf game. It's really hard to get here, but if we can do that, it changes everything about impact. Your whole mindset will change. 